Hi, I'm Kristen Miller, just Kristen, and this is my channel where I talk about science fiction, fantasy books, and the words that go with them. And I'm just going to do a vacation edition of the journal that I normally do every week. I am really off schedule, but we've been in Brazil for going on two weeks now, so that's just kind of life right now. Uh, we are returning this weekend, so hopefully I'll be back on schedule for next week. But yeah, here I am at the beach. I hope that you can hear me okay. This is the Atlantic Ocean, but the waves are pretty small because it's in a cove or a lagoon or something protected a bit by land. So it's a little bit more chill here than other beaches. It's reminding me a lot of the Adirondacks actually. I grew up in New York and like mountain lakes surrounded by mountains is very much like, I don't know, a happy place for me. The only thing that's missing is the amazing smell. Like the Adirondacks just has this amazing, overwhelming pine smell that like you step out of the car and it's like, oh, it's amazing. So I'm <laughs> missing that right now. But it's really pretty here. I'm loving it. That's my daughter in the background having a chill beach day. Um, so I, um, I've had a few dramatic mishaps. I left my Kindle on the airplane on the way here which was heartbreaking and um, mostly because I have a bunch of arcs on there that I haven't read yet that I was worried were lost forever that I was just never going to get back because I, I'm not totally sure how it works. I, it seems like I can only download arcs onto one device and so if I left that device I was just worried that they were gone forever. The good news is the airline has found my Kindle so hopefully I will be getting that back when we go back to the airport to go home. Hopefully I'll be able to pick up my old Kindle. We also bought a new one and I have got it working. And luckily I've been able to download my ARCs so they appear to not be lost. So whether I get my old Kindle back or not, the ARCs are not an issue, which I am really about. I didn't get this new Kindle until just yesterday. So what I had been doing was, the way NetGalley ARCs work is you have an app that you can download the books onto you can also have them sent to your Kindle. They stay in your Kindle forever, but on the app they expire after a certain amount of time. So I immediately changed all of my TBR plans to focus just on the arcs that I still had on my phone app so that if I did lose them forever, at least I will have read them. So I read Lucky Girl by M. Rickert. This was a horror novella arc that I had. It's coming out, I think in September. I need to double check on that, but this was a good time. I am surprised to discover that I actually really do like horror as long as it's the creepy atmospheric kind of horror and not the gory body horror kind of horror. Um, this had zero body horror that I recall. There's nothing gory in this at all. It's just kind of a creepy Christmas Krampus story. It's, it's a Krampus story. Uh, it's just kind of a mystery and then there's kind of some real world implications and you know, I thought it was a good time. It was a quick read. I wouldn't have minded more. I think this would have made a really fun novel. I would have loved to explore some of the characters more and kind of some of the outcomes a little more. But as it was, it was really fun and I would highly recommend picking this up in the fall and or Christmas time. It's going to be a great holiday read. So then I started working on Bindlepunk Bruja by Desideria Mesa. I'm not sure I'm putting the accent in the right spot. I'm a student of Spanish, but Desideria? I don't know. <laughs> Someone correct me if you know, but um, this is a historical fantasy set in the U.S. in the 1920s, and the protagonist is a woman who her mother is Mexican immigrant and her father is white, and because of that she is white passing. She has white features, and so she's kind of been raised to uh, kind of capitalize on the fact that she can pass as white. So this is a really I'm enjoying this story a lot. I'm about halfway through it. Basically, she's a club owner, and of course it's 1920, so it's speakeasies, they're illegal, they're selling, you know, illegal gin and stuff like that. And so watching her story as she wants to become more independent and have her own club and all that stuff and how she kind of has to navigate living between two worlds, um, both as a Mexican immigrant and as a woman who is passing as white and living a very white life. I think it's great. I am looking forward to finishing that, but 
I did decide to just kind of put that on pause because it's not coming out until I believe September. And now that I have it on my Kindle, and I'm not worried about losing it forever to, you know, the Ark uh, Cemetery. I um, I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna go back to what my original TBR was for June, which is a lot of things that have been nominated for the Hugos and also Nebula Awards. So I am going to be starting Plague Birds by Jason Sanford. This was nominated for the Nebula. I believe this was the only Nebula novel nomination that I didn't read. So I'm gonna be starting on that. I just got it from the library. And then I'm also hoping to get to, to like The Lightning by Ada Palmer and Light From Uncommon Stars by Ray Gaioki, which these have gotten Hugo nominations. Um, I have started both. I had originally started Night from Uncommon Stars a few months ago and kind of DNF'd it because it wasn't immediately clicking with me. I was listening to it with an audiobook and I just, I wasn't into it. Part of it was just that it's about violin players and I was a violin major in college and I don't have great memories. I kind of had some issues. I have a lot of, um, I had like some overuse injuries and stuff so it became really painful for me to play violin and then to have to like finish up my senior year just an incredible pain while also giving a recital and playing an orchestra and stuff. I just, it was hard and I, I didn't really want to revisit that kind of world of being a violinist. So I kind of put it down for that because it was kind of triggering just a little bit. But because it has been nominated for the Hugo Awards, I'm gonna give it another chance. I'm picking it back up. I am getting through it. I am liking it much better as a print reading experience. I think I just didn't really connect with the audiobook reader, which I'm realizing sometimes that's just a thing. Sometimes I just don't like the voice of the audiobook reader and that's okay, but that I'm starting to realize it doesn't necessarily mean that I hate the book because I'm having an okay time reading the print. I also, I started to like the lightning. This is another one that a few weeks ago I started the audio and it was just going right over my head. Like I just could not pay attention to this for some reason. I know I'm reading the print and it's better as print, I think, because it's written in kind of a, how do I put that? It's not florid, it's not purple prose, but it's also not straightforward prose. It's written in kind of a roundabout, poetic way. It's not poetic, it's like, it's just a little bit puzzly, and it's kind of dense and just, it's also starting off with, I am the author talking to my reader about how I'm writing this, and I hate that. I really hate those pet peeve of mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plow through because I think the premise of this book sounds so interesting, um, which I don't know a whole ton about it, but it's supposed to be kind of philosophical and, you know, also be like very far future sci-fi, which is very, those are my things. I love those things. Um, there's also supposed to be a, a child with interesting powers, which that sounds, it's intriguing. So I'm gonna like really give that one a chance, but I think I'm gonna focus on plug birds right now just because it's from the library and I don't wanna have to wait for it again. I also on audio have been listening to Ordinary Monsters by Jay Miro and I'm halfway through that and I am feeling very lukewarm about it. It it promises to be this dark academia, magical children, historical fantasy set in the Victorian era. It just looked really dark and creepy and fun and like intriguing like a good mystery. Um, and I'm just finding it to drag. It's super long and I think it's too long. It doesn't need to be that long. I am finding the characters kind of hard to relate to. Like I'm not really rooting for anyone in particular except for the kids and it's like, but I don't know what to root for them for. Like it's unclear if we can trust any of the factions and you know, that can be okay. But just in this particular instance, it's kind of just making me feel untethered from the story. Like I don't know what I should be hoping for. So that's it. That's everything that I've been reading and thinking about. I'm looking forward to being home and being back on my normal two to three videos a week, but yeah. Also, as a teaser, I do have a readathon coming up for the month of August. I'm going to be putting out an announcement video in the next couple of weeks, so be watching for that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye.